Alrighty, so this is a new one. Hi! If you don't know me, I go by RavenRose99 here on YouTube and am mostly known for creating concept storyboards and animatics. Recently, I've been getting a lot of attention thanks to some Baldur's Gate 3 animatics I've made that follow the story of my interpretation of Tav, as well as everyone's favorite vampire spawn. Over the past few months, this little project has grown from what was initially nothing more than an excuse to animate my Tav into a mini-series that has somehow grown an incredibly supportive following that I'm still so blown away by and beyond grateful for, so real quickly, thank you to everyone who has been following my animatics and have been so supportive. It seriously means the world. Despite being very much of an amateur, a number of people have reached out asking if I could create a walkthrough on how I make my animatics, so this video is essentially going to be me talking through my process. Full disclosure, I am by no means a professional, and for the most part, I am pretty much self-taught. So I am 100% certain that if a real storyboard artist or animatic creator saw how I make my stuff, they would probably cringe. I'm pretty sure I could utilize my tools in a much more ergonomic way, but I mean, so far it's been working out fine, and every time I try to force myself to operate in any other way, the quality starts to dwindle. So this is just how I create my projects. I am by no means preaching how everyone should do it. However you get from point A to point B should be your choice of transportation. So some quick context that I feel is a bit necessary before I dive headfirst into my process. I'm not creating fully fledged animations. I do not think I am or ever will be talented enough for that. What I make are storyboards and animatics. A storyboard is essentially an incredibly rough blueprint of what a scene can be, whether it be film, animation, or even video games. It was a process that was actually invented as a means to save money because, essentially, you can conceptualize a bunch of different scenes with a bunch of different angles without wasting time and energy actually filming or animating. Animatics are taking those rough storyboards and polishing them up enough to get a better idea on how it's going to look fully animated. It adds audio, fancy camera movements, and sometimes even voice acting. If you were to compare this to writing a novel, storyboards and animatics are the shitty first drafts you make just to get the idea onto the page. Lots of editing and revisions are still needed if you want to write a good book. Alright, with that out of the way, let's finally get into my process. I'm not gonna lie to you, the first step of any project I do is just daydreaming, and lots of it. I heard somewhere that daydreaming is considered a bad habit in some circles, and I just gotta say screw that. Obviously be smart and safe about it. If you're operating dangerous equipment and you get so lost in your daydreaming that you can get someone hurt, then yeah, don't do that. But if you're any kind of writer or artist, daydreaming is literally essential. You need to give yourself time and space to let your imagination go crazy without fear of judgment. For me, I prioritize listening to music. I know I'm not alone in this, but listening to music is what really unlocks my imagination. Pretty much all of the music you hear in my animatics, I genuinely listen to on repeat for hours, just slowly building the scene in my head. After I've watched the scene play out a number of times on the TV in my brain, I then move on to the rough storyboard. I actually made myself this little storyboarding book, Perks of Working at a Print Shop. Essentially all it is are some panels for the art and then a couple of lines for very quick descriptors. Generally, I'll use it for timestamps or snippets of dialogue. I personally like the panels being really small because it forces me not to get too hung up on details, because I am definitely the kind of person that would spend too much time making sure a hand looks good for something that literally no one but me is going to see. I also found I really like making these thumbnail sketches on paper rather than my tablet, because that way I feel less pressured to make it look good, knowing that I can't copy and paste it, so there's no point in making one panel look really pretty if I have to draw it two more times. Again, you just need to get the basic idea of what you want to happen at this stage. Also this is sort of step 2.5, because I generally do these two things at the same time, but I will also write up a very basic script with brief descriptions and rough dialogue. This just helps get the idea of what I want to happen without worrying too much about whether or not it's good. Once I have the storyboard finished, I will make notes of how many backgrounds I need and begin drawing those first. I do this for two reasons. One, I hate drawing backgrounds. I've recently gotten better thanks to these animatics, but generally, if I can avoid drawing a background, I will. Secondly, if I get all the backgrounds done first, it makes everything after go so much faster, and my workflow just feels way smoother. 
Once I finish drawing all the backgrounds, I will make sure to keep that file up on my workspace so that whenever I need a new background, all I gotta do is go over to that file and copy and paste it into my project. Finally, on to animating. I tend to work in segments rather than creating one long animation timeline. This keeps the process from feeling too overwhelming for me. I will have the script up on my main monitor, my storyboards on my desk next to me, and whatever YouTuber, music, or podcast I've deemed to be my background noise. I will then have a mental checklist of how many segments I want to get done in one art session. Since I did all of my backgrounds first, all I have to worry about is animating the characters over top. I use Clip Studio Paint EX, which is a one-time payment for PC, and if you can afford it, I highly recommend it. It has absolutely changed my life for the better in terms of my digital art. Once I have finished animating a segment, I then export that animation into whatever project folder I'm working in, and then import that clip into Premiere Pro. Here is where I bring the music and audio in and make sure everything lines up. I sometimes need to adjust the timing here to make sure everything fits the way I want it to, and this is also where I kind of start Frankensteining my animation in ways that I'm not sure you're supposed to, but hey, it works, so we're not going to stress too much over it. There is also a feature in Premiere Pro where you can directly edit clips through After Effects, and they will save to your Premiere Pro project. So this is where I play around with camera movements and add any fun little effects like rain and motion blur. Nothing too crazy. I basically repeat these two steps until I make it to the end of the video. Once everything is stitched together how I want it, I will add any little extra bits of polish like the sound effects, and then proceed to watch what I've created an ungodly number of times before I then send it to a friend of mine who does one final look with fresh eyes to see if there's any issues I missed, which I'm not gonna lie, they still get through. There are 100% some spelling errors that I'm sure you could find if you go back through my videos, but hey, I'm human, it happens, it's not the end of the world. I then make the thumbnail, upload the video to YouTube, and then schedule its release. So that's how I personally make my animatics. Again, this is just how I do it, I am by no means a professional, so this is not industry standard, and with time I'm sure my process will change as I also change. If you are someone who wants to start making your own stories, whether it be something similar to what I do, or maybe a webcomic, or even just a fully fledged animation, my biggest bit of advice would be to not obsess over it being perfect. If you spend too much time and energy making sure every line and shadow is pristine, you will get nothing done. If you look through my Baldur's Gate 3 animatics, you will definitely see the skeleton sketches underneath the messy line art, which I've personally kind of grown to like. Not only does it mean I'm able to get more done quickly, but it also kind of shows off how art is all just shapes and lines. Literally anyone can make something like this if you really want to. Another bit of advice I would say is don't be afraid to cheat, and I mean that in the sense of like, copy and paste. I know I said in the storyboard part that I purposefully like avoiding doing this, but at least for when it comes to making the final animatic, I reuse backgrounds and character angles all the time. Obviously, if you're actually animating, that's a completely different beast, but for something like this, don't be afraid to reuse a camera angle or two. There's no use getting frustrated over redrawing something almost identical to another thing you drew a couple frames back. If you have any other questions about the more specific details of how I animate, please feel free to ask in the comments. I might try to put together shorter videos going over the more nuanced aspects of it, but at least for right now, this is just a basic overview of how I make my stuff. Thank you all so much for watching, definitely feel free to check out my other stuff. If you haven't seen my Baldur's Gate 3 miniseries, there will be a link to part 1 down below. It seriously has blown up into such a fun project, and I've been having so much fun just planning out more episodes, and I hope you guys stick around to see what I have in store. If you want to support me, I do have a buy me a coffee, but there is absolutely no need to do so. As of right now, this is just a hobby, not what actually pay the bills, so while anything you're willing to give is appreciated, I am fortunate enough to not be in a position where I need it. Once again, thank you all so much, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.